Hello everyone, it's Courtney here from the Rule Breakers Club. And today, during this Facebook Live broadcast, I wanna talk to you about something a little bit different. We're not gonna talk about specific online marketing strategies or specific tactics you can use to go get clients. Instead, what we're gonna do is talk about the four bullshit beliefs that are holding you back from getting the clients that you want right now. So I guarantee you that one of the beliefs that I'm gonna talk about today is holding you back right now. And what I want you to do is I want you to tackle that belief. I've put a link in the description of this video to the BS Belief Blaster, which is going to help you to identify the belief that you wanna blast through and to get rid of that belief. So during the live broadcast, I'm going to go over what those four beliefs are, some signs that you have the belief, and some examples of what that might look like so that you can pick which one you really wanna tackle. Now, it's quite possible that you'll have all four of the, the BS belief and that there's anything inherently wrong with you, I still want you to just tackle one of these beliefs at a time. So if you want to go get the BS belief blaster, it's a mouthful of things to say, you can go on over to rulebreakersclub.com forward slash blaster. And that worksheet's going to help you to, again, tackle one of these limiting beliefs. Honestly, a little secret, you can use the questions on the, the BS Belief Blaster to tackle any of your limiting beliefs. So even if you have some beliefs that I don't talk about today, because these are going to be specific to getting clients and launching a client-based business, you can use that to tackle whatever your limiting beliefs are about maybe doing more exercise or eating a healthier diet or launching an e-course or growing your list. Any of those beliefs can be tackled with that worksheet. So rulebreakersclub.com forward slash blaster. Now, what I want you to know, I'm gonna be really honest with you. The thing that is holding most people back from getting the clients they want. So if you're not, if you've been in struggle bill, <laughs> struggle bill, struggle bill for a long time, you've been at this business thing for maybe a couple of years or more, and you're just, you're kind of embarrassed about the fact that you haven't seen the growth that you want. I've been there, I totally understand. You're not alone, I'm not trying to shame you. But if you're feeling like that, what I have to tell you is that you are holding on to some beliefs that are not working for you and you might be kind of stubborn about letting them go. I totally have been in that position. Anyone who's here, if you feel like that, you can let us know if not. It's okay, you don't have to out yourself. But I totally was in that, that same position. And it's so, so, so frustrating when you see like 22 year olds starting their business right now and they're going to hit six figures six months from now and you're still in the same position and you kind of like, I mean, it's, it's terrifying. It makes you want to quit. It makes you question everything. It makes you think something's wrong with you. The only thing that's wrong with you is that there's something about the way that you're looking at the world. There's some kind of belief that you have about how business works that isn't working for you and it's holding you back. And that 22 year old doesn't have that belief system. So it's not that they're fancy or special or they're cheating. It's that you are believing something that just isn't true, but it's creating your reality. So I tell people in my program, I've had people come to me and I see the same people and there's just a handful of them. There's a small handful of people who have been through many of my programs and I've seen them in other programs online. teach is going to be different. And what I tell them is don't take my program unless you're willing to let go of these beliefs that you've taken into every other program because you will not see results if you do so. And so I want I really am harping on this because I want you to recognize that if you've been kind of bitter or resentful towards people who are zooming to success faster than you, again, I've been there, but if you feel like that, it means that you are holding on stubbornly to beliefs that aren't working. And so nothing you do is gonna work until you are willing to replace those beliefs. And that's what the blaster is gonna do for you. So in order to begin to let go of your BS beliefs, you have to accept that the way you're doing things right now, it's not working. So for example, I spent two years in business in the frantic hunt for the next client. And I was convinced that this is the way that everybody does business. I was convinced that 
in order to have clients, you had to go get clients. You had to find clients. You had to constantly be looking for them. And that people who were successful just seemed to have more energy than I did, or like they got lucky or something. They were better at hunting for clients than I was. And the thing is, that's not even how it works. If you're hunting for clients, then you're doing it wrong. If you're going after clients, then you're doing it wrong. And my hope is that by giving this live session today, I can help you to blast through the beliefs that are making you think that that's the way that business should be done. So let's go into the four most common beliefs. I wanna tell you how I dealt with them and, and share some examples of how some other people have broken through or blasted through these beliefs as well. So are you guys ready? Are you ready for the first BS belief? Let's see, let me uh, open my feed here. Please let me know, let me know in a comment. Uh, do you wanna know what the first BS belief is? Do you wanna blast through whatever it is that's holding you back right now? Because the first belief, I know there's a delay, which is always frustrating because I can't really wait for you to respond, but please do let me know in the comments. The first belief that's holding you back from getting clients is believing that you need a website to be in business. This is a juicy one, I love it. So I have a newsflash for you, and a website is not a business. I can have a website and not have a business, and I can have a business and not have a website. A website can be an extraordinary marketing tool for a business, but a website is not your business. I cannot harp on this enough. I talk to people in my programs all the time. Often I have to, I have to drill this lesson into people about six or seven times before they finally like, oh, I need to stop tweaking my website all the time and actually focus on developing my services and creating a signature service and getting clients to come to me and I don't really need the website yet. Yes, that's what I've been preaching. So you don't need a website in order to be in business. In fact, it is not the thing you should be focused on to grow your business or start your business in the beginning. You shouldn't be creating a website until you already have a business and you can actually put some revenue from your business towards creating your website. Or if you have some money to spend on your business, you can use that on a website, but it is not absolutely necessary for having a business. Building a business or this whole idea is like building a house. So it's like saying that I'm gonna build a house and the first thing I'm going to do is paint the walls. That doesn't make any sense. There's no house to paint. I can buy all the paint I want, but I'm just painting the air. I don't have anything built yet. It's like saying the first thing I'm gonna put on my house is the roof. It doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense. There's nothing for the roof to go on. So by building a website first, you're, you're going out of order. You're creating something that you're just gonna have to redo once you actually create a business and have clients and have money coming in. And it's a huge distraction from actually doing those things that are going to bring in clients. If you sincerely right now are listening to this and you still believe that you absolutely need to be working on your website, you think I'm full of shit, and you think, I'm not gonna listen to Courtney, I'm gonna keep working on tweaking my website even though I'm not getting clients right now because I just feel like that's what I should be doing. It's a really, really big sign, and I hope you'll hear me on this, that you're someone who is also going into unnecessary debt for your business. So you have a hobby business, unfortunately, if this is what you're doing, and you probably are going into debt for your business. What I mean by that is, are, do you have a tendency to justify investing in e-courses even though you don't have the money to do so because you think the e-course is gonna help you to make the money that'll make back the e-course and that you can justify that debt? Um, do you commonly invest in things like clothing because you think it'll make you feel better, which means you're gonna manifest more clients? Now, I'm not knocking manifesting or anything like that, but if you're doing that, you are in a denial cycle of spending your time and money on things that are not creating results, and I wanna snap you out of that. I don't wanna shame you out of that. There's no shame in this. A lot of people are doing this, and I have a history of doing stuff like this as well because it's easier. It's much nicer to think I can invest in a course and it's gonna teach me how to do it and then everything's gonna be okay versus having to do the scary stuff like putting yourself out there and, and building a signature service and interviewing clients and beta testing your service and doing all those things that are really terrifying. So that's the first thing I want you to know, BS Belief, is that if you think you need a website to have a business but you don't have clients yet, that's the one that I want you to focus on. 
Okay, second BS belief is that you need more credentials before you start a business. So I want to tell you a little bit about my story. I was 22 when I started my business and I had never had a real like full-time salary job. I had jobs, obviously, or maybe not obviously, but I had had jobs, part-time employment at minimum wage um, or not much more. And when I started decided to start my business, I was living in Paris and I didn't have a work visa and I was like, how am I going to make money? So I started tutoring and then I started getting into this online business stuff and I was really into blogging and I just liked this whole online thing. I had major imposter syndrome. I thought that I needed to go back to school and get a PhD in psychology because I wanted to talk about happiness. I wanted to talk about happiness as my business and so I thought, well, I definitely need a PhD in order to do that. So I know that might sound a little ridiculous to you, but I see a lot of people thinking that what they need is more education when what they really need is to learn how to craft a service for people who they can definitely help right now. You need some kind of service that you can offer to people who need something that you are able to do right now. And yes, you can always uh, get more education and credentials later. You will always be growing and doing professional development and getting better at what you do, which means that over time you'll be able to work with people who are more and more advanced because you will be more and more advanced. But there are people you can work with right now. You don't need to go to school in order to do that. You, only time you need to do that is if you are a doctor or a lawyer or some kind of industry like accounting where you have to have certification for what you do. If you don't, then you do not need to go back to school in order to start your business. So if you're in this mode, the problem is, is this is going to be a never ending hole that you're digging for yourself, thinking that you are not enough and you are not ready because newsflash, you're never going to feel ready if that's what you're waiting for. You just have to get started now and that's okay. You can use the BS blaster in order to overcome this belief if this is one that you're struggling with, which I hear you. I totally struggled with this too. So are credentials nice to have? Sure. Can they help your business? Why not? Of course, having more credentials could potentially help your business. Being more credible, of course, might be more likely that some people might want to work with you. But are they necessary for starting your business? Is it the best return on investment that you're going to get? Hell to the no. Absolutely not. So it's great to get credentials, but don't think that once you have that shiny certificate that you're suddenly going to get clients because I know lots of people who are super professional and they're not getting clients either and it has nothing to do with their credibility. All right, so that's number two. <laughs> Megan says, who doesn't love talking about happiness? I hear ya. I, that's what I wanted my business to be all about. So unfortunately that was a little vague, so I had to make it a little bit more, more niche down than that. And I thought, hmm, I'm gonna help people to be happy by starting their own businesses and being able to sell their stuff with their copy and uh, communicate what they do. And so that's how that's evolved. So that's my way of doing that. Okay, so BS belief number three is, that your clients have to come from a certain place in order for them to count. Here's an example of this. I've been working with students in my program, Yay for Clients, and I do a level in that program called Mastery, where I actually do some coaching with people and we have a, a we had a group call. So in our group call, we had one of the gals say that, you know, she got a couple of clients, but they came from uh, referrals from a friend. And so she didn't really, she was like, so, you know, they're not, you know, it's like not exactly what I wanted. And I was like, wait a second. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. And the thing is, I hear people doing this all the time. They say, well, I got a client, but it was a friend or it was a friend of a friend. And it doesn't really count. It's not how I was planning on getting clients. It's not how I thought the clients would come to me. And my question for you is, where do you think other people are getting clients? Everybody starts their business getting clients from the network that they already have, from people who they already know. When I started my resume writing, biz my resume writing business, I literally posted a, a status update on Facebook saying, hey, I wanna help you with your resume if you're having trouble getting a job. It's only gonna be $20 and, you know, send me a message if you're interested. And that's how I started my business, with literally the friends that I had in my Facebook friend group and then branched out from there and then realized I wanted to evolve and the rest is history. 
So when you start a business, you're supposed to focus on that small group of people you already know. Those are the low hanging fruit. It makes absolutely no sense to go out doing marketing activities, trying to get people who have no idea who you are. There's no, the, you know, that quintessential no like and trust factor that you need with people in order to hire you. And that as you work with people, as you get testimonials, as you grow, those referrals will go out. You'll make a larger community. You'll start to do networking in online and offline ways. And you will start to get clients who are not in your friend group, but it has to start with people who you already know. So that's my little gist on that. Okay, BS belief number four is that your industry is inherently difficult, problematic, different, unique, and that everything that I'm teaching about creating a signature service just doesn't apply to you. Now, back to what I talked about earlier in being willing to let go of these beliefs, I wanna give you a little bit of the danger of not letting go of these beliefs by giving you ex an example. So I, I have a couple of people who have been in several of my programs and I've taught them the lessons that definitely would work in their businesses. I know their businesses and I know it would work, but they do not apply the lessons because they are so convinced that their industry is different. They are so convinced that, that it's not going to work for them or that um, their clientele is different or unique and different from everyone else's clientele of every other business that's ever existed. And so they're not making progress. This is the danger of being unwilling to let go of a belief system. So I know it can be scary because who? why would you trust me? But I want you to go through the BS belief blaster because that will help you to kind of examine your belief yourself to see how you might be able to overcome it versus taking my word for it. But this is a belief that I want you to pay attention to. So um, first of all, if this is a belief that you have that your industry is unique or different or challenging, then I want you to watch the Facebook Live that I did last week. It's on my Facebook page and it's all about how to create a profitable business in a highly competitive industry, which is what most people are doing. So if you're not doing that, it's actually strange. And I want you to watch that and I want you to go through the worksheet of how to create your own category because that's what you're gonna need to do in order to um, stop being obsessed with your industry and how your industry works and what the norms are. So make sure to go back and watch that Facebook Live. It's about 30 minutes and get that worksheet and go through how to create your own category. So the, the people who, who get stuck here um, are too fixated on being in an industry. They're too fixated, fixated on the title that they have. I'm a life coach. I'm a web designer. I'm a teacher of this topic. And, and in that industry, this is how it works. And you have to be willing to let go of industry norms. And that's what I go into in depth in the, um, in the, sorry, the Facebook live that I did last week. So I want to make sure that you go and watch that. All right, so my question for you is, hey, Celeste, you may need more skills versus credentials to get the results you want to offer. Tell me where I'm wrong. Um, you always need more skills, but you just get skills by doing stuff. How do you get skills? Not by taking a class necessarily. You can if you want. Skills I learned about running a business come from running a business. So just do it and you'll get better. So yeah, you do need skills but you don't necessarily need more skills in order to start your business. You need to start exactly where you are right now. There's absolutely no reason if they discovered a, uh, a category that they could create a service and or an opportunity in. So I would, I would send them also back to my Facebook Live from last week and say, hey, there's always people you can help with something as long as they need something that you know how to do, which means you need to think back to the fact that you didn't always know all the things that you know right now and that there's people who are where you used to be. They don't know the things that you know now. So you have to stop comparing yourself to the people who are the experts in your quote unquote industry and start looking at problems that you can solve. People who have a problem that you can solve. You're so, so welcome, Celeste. Any other questions about um, blasting through these BS beliefs? So let me, I wanna share a couple of stories with you um, because I asked some of my students to let me know if they had ever struggled with these BS beliefs and a few of them wanted to share some ways that they had struggled. 
So we had Sarah who said that she really struggled with belief number two, which is exactly that, believing that you need more credentials in order to be doing what you do. And she said that she did go back to school for additional training to specialize once she'd chosen a niche that she wanted to work in. But when she first started her business, she felt like she wasn't enough. So it's an indication sometimes getting more education is, is logical, but if you're trying to make it fill a gap that you're not enough or you can't start yet, then it's not right. So she said, um, she was compete. So she's a nutrition nutritionist. And she said that because she kept going back to get education, she was competing with all the other nutritionists and it was tough to feel confident by choosing a niche. Um, the pool is a lot smaller and a lot less overwhelming. And she says, I can work in a much more focused way. Niching and establishes you as an expert to others, but you also start to feel like one too. So there's always people that you can help. Uh, we had Jen who said number four was a big one for her. So the belief that your industry is inherently different. It's difficult. I wrote a book and never thought it would result in getting, oh, I'm sorry. That's not number four. Uh, I think we're doing number three here. So that clients should come from a specific place. I wrote a book and never thought it would result in getting one-on-one -on -one clients. Just by mentioning to someone that I could work more closely with them with decluttering their home turned into a service that I didn't expect to create. So that, that, and I, that could be three or four. A, your clients can come from anywhere. You never know when you mention something that you do and someone's going to say, Oh, I could use that. And it will be in a context that you don't expect. You could be at a barbecue in the summer for like a child's birthday party. And someone's like, I totally need this. And you're like, no, you don't. And how many times do we push away people because it's not the context that we thought a client would come from. So I want you to be really careful of that one. Okay, Michelle, this, I love Michelle. So Michelle says, Courtney, I don't have a website. After the wake up call in our last office hours, so in our live call for the program, I told her she needs to stop focusing on her website. She says, I decided to stop wasting time building something I had no content for. In the past weeks, I've designed my services, developed a few opt-ins, and began the PDF sales page. So I teach them how to create a sales page. So she's creating her sales page that will actually be selling to clients, um, growing her list, and working on getting some clients versus working on the website. It has helped me to get more clarity on my business and spend time on things that will translate into actual paying clients. So those are just a couple of examples of how you can like you can overcome these beliefs by just switching the model that you're looking at. Jeff says, yep, not having credentials is a biggie for me. Yes, yes. So yeah, use the BS bla uh, belief blaster. And we have to look at is, it's of course, it's always nice to have more expertise, but it doesn't mean that you can't get started now. Does it mean that you're gonna be on the, the Today Show tomorrow as an expert? Probably not, but I don't know, maybe. Um, it means that there's people out there right now who need help that you can give right now. And that for you just waiting until you have more expertise, by the time you have that more expertise, you're going to be a lot farther ahead of these people. And you actually might have a harder time working with them because the more you become an expert and separated from people, the harder it is for you to empathize and relate to them. So it's always nice. I notice as my business grows, my clients are also more advanced too, because I do a better job resonating with people who are where I just was, not where I was five years ago. So that's just another way of looking at it, that it's actually a good thing where you are right now because you can help a certain group of people. You might not be able to help in five years. You might not be the best person for them in uh, several years from now. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are watching the recording or if you come back, you have more questions, just go ahead and put them right in the comments of this live stream because I will come in and answer your questions and, uh, you know, re reply. So make sure to do that. And I will see you guys next week. I'll give you a little teaser of what we're going to do next Tuesday. Ooh, we're going to talk about how to say no to clients, even if you need the money without freaking out. So we're going to talk about how do I identify clients that you shouldn't be working with and to say no to them, even if that money feels really attractive to you, because ultimately it's what's going to be in the best interest for your business. So that's what we're going to talk about next Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern right here. Um, you can come in next week and hit reminders to make sure that you get notified about the live stream and make sure to get that BS belief blaster, which is at rulebreakersclub.com forward slash blaster, I believe. Yes. Rulebreakersclub.com forward slash blaster. 
And I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Mwah.